But Dieta, I'm too busy to spend 20 minutes with God today. Well, that's why, Sir Decker, 40 minutes would be a better choice. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. So we, why are you laughing? It's so true. Because you have so much passion in that. I have a lot of passion around that. And I also have a lot of passion around that for over 30 years, you've given us the honor and the privilege of coming alongside you, not only buying, selling, and investing in real estate over 3,117 times, coming alongside you to build your faith, build your fund, build your finances, and even strengthen, heal, and flourish inside relationships. We're going to discover in this segment what gets in the way or what are a few things that get in the way of intimacy with God and what are some of the ways you might be able to be purposeful, Mm -hmm. intentional. Yeah. Because I think that's the big thing that gets in our way. And We're not intentional. And the reason we're doing this was in your introductory, which was your introduction, I guess, not introductory, your introduction, which was helping you build your faith. Right. Right? Yes, That's true. That's where we put our money where our mouth is. <laughs> every, right. every time. So as we consider or as we consider what gets in our way, mm-hmm. the biggest thing is not having intention because we forget. We talked about that in segment A. We talked about it in segment B. Mm -hmm. It's building our life so it's a setup Mm -hmm. for intimacy with God. Right. And we've talked about some of the practices that we've done Mm -hmm. and how they have helped us move forward. And I'm hoping you're picking up some of what we're putting down and go, tried that. It really didn't work for me. But I haven't tried that. And I'd like to experiment with that because it's all a choice. It's not one size fits all. Nothing is ever one size fits all. But yeah. here are some options. The only thing that's one size fits all is God. Exactly. God fits all. Except in a different way. He shows up to me differently than he shows up to you. He communicates to me differently than he communicates to you. Yeah, because he communicates what you need. Exactly. So devotionals. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit, Ken, about some of the devotionals that we've done and how even those little Usually it's one scripture, and sometimes they're out of context, which can be a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. And then we'll read the larger piece of scripture around it so that we have more context around the content. Mm -hmm. And then we'll spend a fair bit of time going deep in a small aspect. Well, it's interesting because when we first came to faith, Mm -hmm. we were told you should do devos, devos, devos. What the heck is a devo? Right. It's a short form for devotional, right? And what's a devotional? Really, it's it's someone else has put some information together to help you relate to God better, right? right. So, and they maybe ask some questions. Maybe they have some scenarios. And one of the first ones we ever did was called Two Part Harmony by Patrick Morley. Patrick Morley. It's out of print. You can still get some. Uh, new copies used, if you new go or used. yeah new or used if you go hunting because mm-hmm. we've been buying them lately because mm-hmm. we did it 27 years ago yeah and it created a lot of conversation and conflict. a lot of conflict and fights but and it was part of the curing of our marriage because it helped create some intimacy so simple, two pages per per day, right? And it just got us talking because communication was one of our biggest issues. It got us talking. It got us arguing. It didn't matter. It got us discussing. And like 27 years later, I just said, hey, let's do this devotional again because we do a devotional now. Usually it lasts six months or a year. It depends on the size of it. The one we did just before that was on the Psalms. Yeah, by, and we by love David author Kitts. David Kitts. He yeah. did a three. So here's a, a shameless plug for David Kitts. He wrote a three volume Psalms devotional. It's mm-hmm. three big chunks of book, and it's amazing, and it's incredible. So if you haven't done that one, 
do that. And one. that's that's scripture that I've always had the hardest time to relate to was the Psalms. Mm-hmm. Not the Song of Psalms, but the song. And some people have a, the easiest time to relate to the Psalms. Absolutely. Ever- I just struggled. So when when we got those books and then I said, okay, we're going to do the first volume, it was a little tough at first. And yet he does such a great job mm-hmm. that it really, really made me start to love the Psalms. And if you don't know who David Kitsies is, he's a local Ottawa author and dramatist. He is amazing and is one man drama presentations of biblical characters, right? Mm-hmm. Amazing. He wrote Psalms Alive. He wrote mm-hmm. another one, which was uh, the viewpoint of the crucifixion from a Roman soldier that I read. It was it was terrific. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't seen, if you don't know him, just Google David Kitts. This yeah. is a time you can rely on it. Yeah. And I I just want to get back to, you know, sometimes we read uh, Joyce Myers and a power-up kind of Devo. Depends on the season and what we're feeling. Mm-hmm. I kind of ask God, you know, what, what do you want me to do next? Right. We've done some John Maxwell leadership devotionals. Like I can't even name three quarters of the ones we've done. I probably only name like 3% of the ones mm-hmm. we've done. And yet they draw us closer to him than we could otherwise be and, drawn. And they create the habit of doing a little bit mm-hmm. of connecting with God Most of them have a little prayer. Sometimes it's written. Sometimes they just ask you to pray about something. And it really is that discipline. And we miss it if we don't do it. So, And what what we found is when you get less busy, because people say, I'm too busy for that. Well, when we're busy, we schedule it in and we do it. When we're not busy, like when we go on vacation or I leave for travel for work and then we're apart, so then what I've realized is I take the devotion with me because our, our process is I'll read it and then we discuss it. Because if I read it, I stay focused. If Yetta reads it, I have a harder time So he reads it out it. loud. He just doesn't read it to himself yeah, if you're it trying to picture to this. So now I take the devotional with me on my business trips and I call you in the morning. Even yeah. if there's three-hour time zone difference, I'll call you in the morning and read it to you, and then we discuss, and it's beautiful. And when we were on vacation back, uh, well, it doesn't matter when, nine months ago, and we had a bunch of company, and we decided we're going to continue to de- do our devotion, and so we did it with them. We said, "Hey, devotion times at this time. If you'd like to join us, go ahead." And what was interesting for most people. When we asked them, what did you get out of the vacation? What was your favorite? What you know? What was the best thing you did? What was it? It was the devotional time. They because loved it. They loved it. And I think what it is is it got them to go deeper because it wasn't only their revelation from God. It was each other's revelation. And it was shocking how different it was from one person mm-hmm. to the other yeah. as we were doing the same yeah. devotion. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really, really powerful. My challenge to you, you want a challenge? Yeah, we always want a challenge, don't we? My challenge is today, schedule and habit stack ways to increase your intimacy with God. And we're grateful that you joined us on Life's Inside Track because when we move forward together, we've got this. Moving forward with the Decker team Moving forward